Hello, Willard Wildcats. I want to share with you some ways that you can measure the weather at your house. So I'm here outside on a cloudy, kind of a chilly day, so different from yesterday. The weather changes every hour, every day. So one thing that you want to measure about the weather is what the temperature is. I can say it's warm or I can say it's cold, but how warm? or how cold. And so I have here a tool called a thermometer. It's made of plastic and it's very rugged. It's pretty strong. So it's a good one to put outside. And you can see there's two sides to it. Because temperature, there is more than one way to measure, to measure temperature. There's more than two ways to measure temperature. But this thermometer just shows two ways. In the United States, we measure temperature using, um, using degrees Fahrenheit. So you'll see here at the bottom, there's an F here, and that means that the numbers that we're used to thinking about for temperature are on this side. In other parts of the world, they use um, a measuring, um, a measuring a system called degrees Celsius, and that's on this side. So. You can see how there's blue numbers and there's red numbers. The blue numbers are when it's cold. When it's super cold, it's below freezing. It would snow if it was that cold. The red numbers all show you um, temperatures when it would rain. It might still be chilly, but it would rain. Almost all the time here in Southern California, we are in the red temperatures. Here in Pasadena, we stay in these red temperatures almost all the time. And right now, you can look in the middle. You see, ah, if I turn it just right, there is some red liquid on the inside. Some of my younger students see red liquid and they think, oh, is it, is it blood? What's in there? And it's not. It's, um, it's actually, I think it's like a rubbing alcohol. It's a type of an alcohol with red food coloring in it, with red dye in it, so that you can see it really easily, because it's easy to see that red isn't it? So right now you look to see where's the top of the red and you can see it's not quite all the way up to 60 so it's not quite 60 degrees Fahrenheit outside today. So if you are measuring temperature you want to make sure you have a thermometer outside. Oh and one other thing it might seem strange, but you want to make sure your thermometer is in the shade because sunlight has a lot of energy. And if the sun is shining on the thermometer, it won't measure, the thermometer will stop measuring what the temperature of the air is, and the thermometer will start measuring all the energy that's in the sun, and it will actually read much higher than what the real air temperature is. So when you put a thermometer outside, make sure it goes in the shade. Now another thing that I wanted to show you how to make is, well, we've got really cloudy skies right now and they, the weather forecast says it might actually rain. So I want to make a tool called a rain gauge. A gauge is a tool that measures how much of something. So this rain gauge is going to tell us how much rain falls. So for that you need a container. Um, so I have a two liter bottle. I had one of these in my science room. But you see how small this opening is? The opening of the bottle has to be pretty much the same all the way down. You don't want a cup that goes out like this. You don't want a cup that, goes, that closes near the top. So I need to cut off this top part. This Make sure you have a grown-up helping you with. So I brought a few different tools to use, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of scissors. This is what a grown-up would do. Don't start cutting anything. And I'm going to push it down. Well, I'm going to hopefully there, push it down. And then I'm poking a hole in it. And now I'm going to cut all the way around the top. I cut this part off. There's all sorts of different science, science experiments where you need the top of a tube, so I'm gonna, or the top of a two liter bottle, so I'm gonna think about what I wanna do with this. But now I have a container that is wide open and has straight sides. And I'm going to get some tape, which I put right over here. Hang on one second. Ah, there's my tape. 
I'm going to do two things. One is it's a little sharp up here at the top, and I don't want to cut myself, so I'm going to take a piece of tape that's about as far around as the bottle, and I'm going to put this at the top of the bottle. There it goes. I'm going to put it all the way around. There we are, just like that. It's all the way around, and I'm going to push it over to the inside, and that's going to cover up any sharp pieces of the bottle so that I can't accidentally cut my finger. So now that tape makes it, it covers up any of the, sh the smooth parts, it covers up any of the sharp parts, and it makes it smooth on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this outside in a spot. Um, when it rains, it's just going to sit out here, out in the middle of my yard, and how am I going to know how much rain falls? Well, I'm going to put on a ruler. I'm going to use some tape to tape a ruler onto the side of it. Now, rulers, rulers have two ends, so you always have to make sure that you look to see which end of the ruler you're going to put down at the bottom. Now, this ruler on one side, it measures in centimeters, and in the other side, on the other side, it measures in inches. I think that if I were to describe measurements to you that you might be more familiar with inches, but centimeters are smaller and so it's easier to count with centimeters because there's kind of like more of them in a small space. So I am actually going to put the ruler on so the zero centimeters is down at the bottom. I'm going to tape this on here and then when it rains It'll rain a little bit, or maybe it'll rain a lot, and then I can look to see on the centimeter side how many centimeters of rain fell. So, got my tape. I'm gonna get that ready, because I have to have this. I have to make sure the zero's at the bottom. So, zero centimeter at the bottom. It looks straight. I'm holding it in place. There we are. That was probably a longer piece of tape I needed. I'm going to put one piece there, and I'm going to put another piece towards the bottom. And then I'm going to put another piece at the top. There we are. So, my ruler is very well attached to my rain gauge. I'm going to leave this outside now over the next day or so. And then, after it rains, I'm going to be able to tell you how many centimeters of rain fell at my house. What's interesting is if you do this, you might get more rain than I got. You might get less rain than I got, because the rainfall is a little different in different places. There's one more tool I want to show you how to make. It's called, well, it, there, it's, it's called an anemometer. An anemometer measures how fast the wind blows but it's also a wind vane. So the wind vane tells you what direction the wind is going. So I want to make a tool that shows at least what direction the wind is blowing, but I think I can manage to make it so that it will also show us how fast the wind is blowing. But I think it's about to start raining, so I might need to do this inside. Let's see. I'm back, Willard Wildcats. I went and I got some materials to make my wind vane and my anemometer. And I'll show you what I've done. I've, I've assembled some of the pieces, but then we're going to finish it together. So the first thing I needed is a, a base. I needed a bottom. So I got some pieces of cardboard. And then I needed to be able to have something stick straight up out of the base. I needed something to come straight up. Now if I had some modeling clay, I could have made a ball of modeling clay and then pushed it in there. Um, but I didn't, so I came up with another idea. I took a pair of scissors and I cut the cardboard into strips and then I cut the strips into little squares. And then the things I need to have stick straight up are a pencil and a straw, and that's about the same size as the hole and a hole punch. So I took
took out a bunch of those and I'll show you some pictures right now of what I did. So I cut a bunch of these and then I glued them to the base and I put the straw in one and I put the pencil in the other and you can see they are standing nice and straight up. Now this one here the glue has dried some now, so I just have four or five pieces of cardboard with the hole in them, and then I stuck a pencil down into it. And then what I did is I cut some triangles out of some brightly colored paper. And I took those triangles and I attached them to each other to make like a little pocket. And then I made what you see now. So here's the little pocket and I just took a straw and I can put the straw in there, but I don't, now that I've made it, I don't want this, this to fall off. So I'm gonna take a little bit more tape. And I'm going to attach the straw to my arrow with some tape. So now it's stuck on there. And what I'm gonna do, let's see, when it's windy, the wind will catch this and the wind will push this because this is a little bit bigger and flatter. The wind will catch this and push it in the direction that the wind is blowing. So I need to have it to be able to turn. So I have a little needle, a pin or a needle would work for this. And if I take, can you see it? It's a little tiny little needle there and I'm going to stick it through the straw like that and it will spin on the needle. It'll spin back and forth on the needle. And if I take this, so here's my pencil. I took a pencil and I pushed it down into those little holes so it's not going anywhere. The top of the pencil, where the eraser is, the needle will go in there. So I'm gonna push that down in. And there is no, oh, there is no, Get your parents help with this, especially if you're using a needle. A pin is much better. I'm going to push it down in there. And now, when the wind blows, it will spin this in the direction that the wind is blowing. So, for example, like this. You see? Now, if you want to know the direction that the wind is blowing, well, it helps to have something on the base here to show north, south, east, and west. So I'm going to draw the cardinal points. I'm going to draw the directions. I'm going to write an N for north, an E for east, an S for south, and a W for west. See what I did there? So now you can see the cardinal points. And when I put this out and the wind blows, whichever way it's blowing, I have to make sure that I put this down so the end is pointing to the north, and I'm lucky because at my house, I know exactly which way is north. And where I'm sitting right now, north is in that direction over there. So I would set this up so the end is pointing to north, and then when the wind blows, I'll know which way the wind is blowing because it will spin my arrow. I've made a wind vane. There's another tool called an anemometer. And an anemometer, I also need something similar. I made another base and I'll show you some pictures again. I, I just cut some, or I, I cut some little squares of cardboard and I punched holes in the center and this time I put a straw in through the center. And what I need to have an anemometer, I need something that the wind is going to blow and it's going to spin it. So I, okay, I did this when I was in sixth grade. I made an anemometer and I found it so interesting. I still remember how I made it. I used it with making, I, I made it using a cork and I have no corks at my house. So I started thinking, well, hmm, what could I use to show you how to make an anemometer to make something that would spin? So this is a Mary Ann Kelly. This is a Mrs. Kelly design. We'll see how it works. If you go on the internet, there's other ways to do it. But I got a bottle cap and I got a nail and I already started a little hole. I had a tiny little hole. Make sure you have your grown-ups help uh, using a hammer and a nail. Make sure you have their permission. And if I push that nail all the way through, you see, here's the bottle cap and here's the nail. And the nail will sit down there 
and this whole part here can spin. Well, that's nice and all, but what's going to spin? I got some plastic straws. The straws, the shape of, uh, I'm going to show you a picture of what a, a real scientific anemometer looks like right now. And you can see it looks like there's sort of these cups around it, and the cups get blown by the wind and it spins. The stronger the wind, the faster it spins. So that's what I'm going to do now. Now what I have are my straws, and I also have oops, a hot glue gun. This is another thing that you should make sure you have your grown-ups help when you're doing, if you're using it. So I'm going to make sure, yep, I've got nice hot glue. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put on a big old glob of glue there. There we are. And then I'm going to put on a straw. There's straw number one. And I need to do this. I'm going to try four times. Here's straw number two. All the straws kind of have to, or excuse me, all of the spoons, all of the spoons have to be pointed in the same direction. So there's two. There's spoon number two. I'll put another one here. Here is, yep, yeah, see this one goes in the same direction. There's spoon number three. Hold it there and get a little bit more on this side. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but it has started raining. The rain has finally come. So I got my rain gauge ready to measure the rain. There's number four. All right. Now, I like using a hot glue gun because it's going to dry pretty quickly. But when I put it, you know, these little extra bits of glue off in here, on a windy day, on a windy day, this will spin. So that you can see if it's spinning slowly, it's, it's a, a, not a windy day. If it's spinning quickly, it is a very windy day. And what I'm going to do is using the Sharpie marker, take this out again, I'm going to color one of these spoons red. So if I want to, if it's a really windy day and it's spinning, I can time it and I can see how many times does it go all the way around by watching the red one. If it's spinning super fast, I can see, I can time it. I can say in one minute, how many times does the red one go around? Maybe it goes around three or four times. It's not a windy day. Maybe it goes around 10 or 20 or 30 times and it's a very windy day. All right. So. I will try and get a video of my anemometer and my wind vane working when it is a breezy day, but right now the rain has started. I'm going to leave my rain gauge out. It's all plastic and it's ready to start collecting the rain, but all my other pieces, they're cardboard. And so these need to go inside. They need to be stored inside unless it is a sunny day. Or excuse me, unless it is a not rainy day. They can go out on a cloudy day. Thank you for joining me. It's trying to spin. There's a bit of a breeze. Oh, there it goes. That's the wind. <laughs> Thank you, friends, for joining me and making some weather tools today. Send me a picture if you make one. Bye-bye.